Dave here. How are you? Today on the show, the star of the show will be the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus. It is going to power absolutely everything and you can watch and see how it goes, whether it's up to the task. So I have a camera down here right in front of the monitor. So this should be quite exciting. I'm going to run all of the computers and the monitors and I'm going to run the router table down the back there. I'm even going to run the table saw, the saw stop table saw. This is the job site saw stop. And these things are known to want the exact voltage. So any mucking around, this thing's just not going to work and I'll have egg on my face. I will also use the bobbin sander and the band saw, all being uh, dust extracted by the uh, CT26 down there. And I will also use the CapEx and also powered dust extraction by another CT26 down here. If you're up for a little bit of excitement, the project's no big deal. We're going to make a wooden float for concreting. It's going to basically be uh, use the saw to rip a piece down to width, then we'll use the bandsaw to cut a shape for the handle. We'll do use a hand plane to chamfer around the edges. Or maybe even use the quarter inch router, uh, quarter inch roundover on the router table to make the handle nice and easy to touch. All powered again by this fellow here. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, I've got to tell you, but I think I think it's up to it. So I'm just keep feeding it a bit of juice at the moment. It's up to 76%. Got another hour and a half or so to go before the show starts. Actually, you guys are watching it right now. So settle back, uh, <laughs> grab yourself a coffee, and maybe it'll go well. If halfway through the show, I just end up, you'll know that it's fallen over. Because if the power freezes, that's it. It's not going to have anything coming from the mains. I will pull that plug out when the mains, <laughs> when we start the show. See you in a second. Dave here. How are you? Dave here, how are you? Today is the 26th of November, 2023. An exciting show indeed. Now you can see down in the corner here, I have the monitor. I've got a video, a little webcam right on that monitor for the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus. Now, anytime I use a machine, you will see the surge in the power on the right hand side. So that's over on here. And you'll be able to see how much is being used. At the moment, I'm using 175 watts. That's running both of these monitors and my computer. Uh, and this machine, I'll just give you a quick uh, rundown on it. This solar generator uh, has a capacity of three kilowatts that it can punch out continually. It will have a six kilowatt surge. So if I have something that runs stronger than three kilowatts for you know, maybe a few seconds, it will handle it and then just as long as it comes back below three kilowatts or three kilowatts it'll be fine it's got about two kilowatt hours of storage in the main unit and it's got two kilowatt hours of extra battery that i've plugged in you saw that big orange cable on the back that's connecting the jackery explorer 2000 plus to the jackery 2000 plus battery whatever they call it anyway i'm pretty excited because I'm going to run this table saw. I'm going to run my router table. I'm going to run the CapEx. And this is all the CapEx and these guys across the back here with dust extraction. And that's going to be powered as well by this bad boy. When I'm using the router table, the dust extraction is the big impeller, which is oversized for what this unit can handle. But I'm working on a trick for that as, as well. We'll see what we can do. But I'm, this is really, really, Fascinating. You know, I have a passion for solar power and all that kind of stuff with all the panels that I've got on my property. And uh, I, I'm just stoked. 
I really am. Anyway, there's links in the video description down the bottom for all the things I'm going to be doing on the show today. Be aware, I don't get paid by Jackery to do this. They gave me that unit. That's the end of the deal. My working with this on the show is part of the deal. I'll be doing two live streams with this thing running it. So you can see in a real shed situation or workshop, if is this up to it? This is fascinating. All right, all right, okay. Now, the first thing I wanna do is because I'm gonna be using these machines, I wanna change the lens in my eye muffs. Now, this has got a crack in it. You can see just there. So I got in touch with George and I said, George, I need some more lenses. So he said, fine. So I thought I'd just show you how quickly it is to replace. That's one side, that's the other. Here's the new lens. It comes in a nice pack. I got a clear one because uh, why not? I'll take the protective cover off it. Are you excited about whether this battery is gonna handle it? At the moment, it's on 97% on, uh, on the panel there. You can see it down there. And up on the top there, the second battery is 95%. I haven't got the camera on that as well because you wouldn't see it. Okay, so Reptiler, so I guess we have to have the name facing down the same direction as the nose. And it's quite an easy thing to do. You just put it in and click it. And that's one side done. Same thing on the other side. You put it into the top, drag it across the bottom. So if you've got a pair of these and the lens is cracked, just get in touch with Reptile or iMuffs, whatever the uh, website is. I think it's iMuffs.com. And you can buy replacements for it. Okay, so that's done. All right, now we're going to go over to the CapEx straight off. <laughs> I know you guys are hanging out to watch this. How many will watch? 46. I'll do a quick read first before I do that. Uh, Rod, morning. Derek, hi everyone. Mark, morning all. David, Lucy. Is that two separate power units in, on top of each other or just one simply? I think I explained that, David, so we'll, we'll go through that. There's two, there's one, one battery on the top and the inverter, which is the power station, basically the generator, has got one two kilowatt hour battery in it as well. So this is really cool. You don't need to have the second battery on top. You don't need it if you don't want it. I've just got it there because I'm panicking. I'm hoping we're gonna make it through the show. And I did not want the whole show to just freeze while I'm doing it. So, because as soon as I lose power, the show will die and you'll just see me and that'll be the last image you see. You'll probably say, thank heavens. Okay. okay. Um, all right, we're going to, what did I say I was gonna do? I was gonna cut it to length. Now, this is, the project I'm gonna make is a wooden float for concreting. It's really, really basic, but I thought, you'd like to see the machines working and actually cutting and ripping and all that kind of stuff and uh, coming off this power supply. So I'm going to switch the cameras over to the CapEx when I get this one working properly. There it is. So you can see I've got the dust extractor down the bottom under the cupboard and that's I've got the Jackery hooked that's hooked into the Jackery's power supply at the front and also the capex is plugged into that so you're going to have a full total load of possibly um oh thanks derek you're going to have a power load of around 2600 watts so now that i've got that i'm going to put the imuffs on so here i'm coming through pop them on so people that haven't seen these things you put them on i'm wearing glasses how cool is that Derek just put a link up in the, video, in the uh, side chat there. We'll cut this to length. I actually better get the piece of wood. Don't you knock any of the cables, Pierre. I'll be upset. Now, the idea is with a wooden float, I'm going to use this piece. This is a piece of the Akume, which is basically Pacific maple. I'm going to use this for the float. I'm going to have a section that's about yay long, there's no real hard and fast dimensions and a section about yay long for the handle. Just as long as the handle is shorter than the actual piece that's going to be the float. All right. So remember, keep your eye, keep your eye on the, on the monitor down in the corner. 
I'm excited. So remember, this is a fair pull. Here we go. Okay, that's the first part. Very exciting. <laughs> Did it work? Come back to uh, this one. I love these things. They're just so special. What do you think? I think maybe I might ask George about doing another giveaway of one of these. I might do that next week. That'd give you something to come back to. Did it? Did it keep on going? Did you see the change in the um, in the wattage? You need no, new noise cancelling muffs. Great. So now you can see my handle is going to be about that much of the length in total. And I have already got a little bit of a rip mark there because I thought that might be the right height to rip this down to. Okay, table saw time. Now this is the big one. Because the saw stop has, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm crazy. The saw stop, if the saw stop doesn't get the right voltage, it will just refuse to work. It won't start. So, uh, Ron, this is softwood. You don't really need a hardwood for, for uh, concrete floating. It's, you know, it's, we're, we're working on the slurry. Normally you go over with a steel float and a bull float and all that kind of stuff in a helicopter if you want to. You work all the, all the slurry up, up above the aggregate. That's how, I'm, I'm just stepping off to the side here. So, and then at the end, if you want a texture on the concrete, that's why you use a wooden float. If you want a nice shiny polished look, you use a steel float. So this will be fine going over the top of what is already being done with the other floats. This is the final float if you want to, um, it, it's, it's designed to suck the uh, pieces of slurry up and pull the sand up. It works quite well. Anyway, let's, uh, I'm just trying to think about the best way to show you this. I might bring that camera around. I don't know. I don't know. I think, look, you'll be able to see this just fine. Maybe I'll do it this way. Um, okay, if I bring it towards me over here, I'll have to make sure. I've got the dust extractor's hose plugged in. I'll bring this around. Oh, easier just to undo it, I guess. Bring that around here. But look, a wooden float for some people is an easy project. For some people, it's going to be a hard project. So if you've never done it before, it might be a hard project. There we go. I have it there. Now, you're going to have to just believe me that the lights are on because they're going to go, you know what, I'll, I'll bring the other camera up because I think you really are going to be interested to see this. And I don't need this other camera around beside the CapEx anymore. Ah, uh, where are we? I have the dog here beside me as well, so. There we go. Aim that down there. That should work. It really should. <laughs> I love this stuff. Okay, there you go. I'm going to turn the saw stop on and it's going to go through its check. There we go. You watch red light. We want a solid green is what we're after. And once I've got that, I'll move, I'll change cameras again. I'll move this camera away. Just waiting. Normally takes around 30 seconds. Solid green. Excellent. Okay. I can move that camera in a second. I'll just change back to here. Oh, I hope I haven't killed that camera. That'd be terrible. I think we're okay. All right. Let's just move that out of the way. All right. Uh, I need to set the width. You can see everything from there. I have the little guard on this. It's not a dust extraction guard. I do have the dust extraction in the back down there. I'm going to rip it at this width. Where are we? That's about it. This is a really nice saw. 
lock it on so it's not going to go anywhere. All right, I'll do a quick read. Um, try the Bluetooth version. I reckon the audio was better than my Bose. They're brilliant. Uh, I need a new noise cancelling muffs. Uh, the Bose is very good. Chris, hi Derek. Uh, Ron, Dave's at Hardwood. Yes, uh, Rod. How's it over there? Morning all from Michael. Uh, blue skies and hot. Maybe uh, them, another show, Dave. Concrete finishing. What do you think? I'd have to actually do the concrete, <laughs> Dave. I haven't got any to do at the moment. But yeah, that's a possibility, definitely. Uh, Nathan, morning. And Rod, silver grey. Okay, back on with the eye muffs. Yeah, it's important. It's important when you put them on to hold back here and just pull back until they slide on. And then you can push them forward and pull them backward until they're in the right spot. They're great. So good. Okay, you ready? Let's see what this bad boy does. Give me a second. Uh, I, need a, um, I need a push stick. I'm not doing this without a push stick. And I'm wondering whether I should use a... Uh, no, I'll, I'll be right. I could have used one of those specialized things that drops from MagSwitch that drops into the slot. I can't see it right at the moment. I don't want to slow the show up, but I have got MagSwitch's push block or push stick. These are great. There's a handle up here and there's a slot in here if you need to, you know, hold it on the side for whatever reason, if you're using two of them. These are replaceable and they're nice. What else can I say? All right, here we go. Moment of truth. It's working. <laughs> All right. And with load. Push stick. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? All right. So that's that. I have a piece of wood and another piece of wood. All right. I want to create a shape on here that's going to be comfortable to hold. So what have I got? I've got, I've got a, uh, a paint tin. And I will use that as the um, as my shape to scribe around. I will come in flat. I think I might use the combination square just as a bit of a guide for the width that I want. Now I'm going to use these screws here to hold the handle on. These are stainless steel. The screws aren't going to do much. They're going to basically locate it while the glue goes off. The glue is going to do all the work. So what I'm doing is just checking the depth that I want. Let me see. Okay, if that's there, I want to make sure that I'm not going to go deeper than the thickness of the wood. So that's going to go onto there. So what I need to do is I need to check that this, what I'm, oh, I've got to move it where you can see it back over this way. Okay. I need to have this part here where it's com coming down here for the screw. Let me just do a quick drawing there for you. That's very basically what's going to happen. I got a shaky hand there on that side. I need this height here not to be thicker or, or too thin because it's got to be less than the total width for the screw. Now you can see that would have been a disaster. The screw would have gone through the base of the float. So I'm going to just do a quick look from this side. Now I don't want to screw from uh, the underside of the float into the handle because I don't want those kind of 
depressions in the float. I want the bottom of the float to be nice and flat. So that's where I'm at with that. And I'll, I'll just transfer that mark to the other end. I could have used the Lark uh, depth gauge, but I haven't got it on me right at the moment. Let's see if it's there. It's a really handy little item. If I've got it here, I'll get it out. Put this down here. I think it might be in the other side. Nope. No, I haven't got it there. It's, it's going to be here somewhere. Maybe under here. No. It's kicking around in the workshop. I've been using the thing. It's instead of using one of these, it's really, really handy. So I'm going to put a mark here. Right the way along. Oop. And the other end. All right, I have a line drawn along there. You may think that's great or not. I don't know. Um, I'm here right top on this one. So I know where I'm at. And now I can create the uh, sweep section at the end. I'll come in. I might just come in the same amount from both ends. It always looks symmetrical. Like if you've got it symmetrical, it really isn't going to make any difference to the concrete. It doesn't care, but I care about things like this. I want it to look good. I'm going to put that on the center there and do a line like so I'm at the center at that end. A line like so. You can see what I've got there now. And I'm going to do a line that's going to uh, another radii that's going to intersect with the tangent. Just from the top and the other end. There we go. That's what I've got. And that looks nice. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk about something that's very dear to my heart and very important right at the moment for one of our viewers, and that's John Lafferty. Now, John has had polycystic kidney disease forever, not forever. He was a cyclist, terrific cyclist, did long distance cycling, competition, very, very fit man. Hereditary disease, polycystic kidney disease, where there's massive cysts build up in your kidney. And I had him on the show once around about four years ago, and he brought a balloon and a tennis ball to show you how big his kidney was in the side here. It was just massive. You could see it. And he's had both of his kidneys removed. He's on dialysis. And also because he's been on dialysis for such a long time and the strain on his heart with polycystic kidney disease all that time, he now needs a new heart. So he needs his I'm functioning possibly around about 95%, 96%, blah blah blah. Fit as a fiddle. John's down to 18%. You can imagine how that affects him. He has a hard time walking from his house to his shed. He's got three steps to get from the path up into the shed. And that is a major effort for him. I don't know about you, but like we take good health for granted. I, I just complain about, you know, maybe stooping over to pick something up. I'm thinking, well, I'm getting a bit old. But that's just a, a fleeting thing. John's got this 24-7. So what we're doing is, John has got to see the specialist at St. Vincent's Hospital at the beginning of December. Once, that's, once he's seen that final specialist about getting a heart transplant and new kidneys, he will then have, uh, he will then go to the top of the list for the country because he is in such a bad way. So the first donor that becomes available, and there's a daunting thing for John as well, he knows right now that someone is alive and walking around perfectly fit and something is going to happen to that person with the blood, right blood type and their kidneys and heart will live on in John's body. And that's, that, that's very, um, as I say, daunting to, to John that, some, that this can happen. This person walking around has got no idea that's going to happen. Could be me. Could be you. 
You never know. You get in a car, you fully expect to come home at night. You might be in a car accident. Anyway, getting a bit morbid there. But the thing is, once John gets the transplant, he's covered for all of that. That's not a problem. We have a GoFundMe running for John. So John Wilson has made this. Of course, John Wilson is um, very uh, friendly with John Lafferty. John's in Melbourne. John Lafferty is up in Canberra. And St. Vincent Hospital is in Sydney. So you can see where we're going with this. John needs to stay in Sydney for three months after the surgery. One month in the, in the hospital, that's covered. Once he's finished there, he is not covered very much. There's a little bit of an allowance for him to find a place to rent. And it's got to be close to the hospital. So, and also for him to catch light rail into the hospital. So he, can, he has to go in every day for the next two months. He's not a, he can go back to Canberra, but bloody hell, that's a long trip there and back every day. So he has to rent. This is what the GoFundMe is for. We're trying to get some dollars together. So John, and I'll show you a picture of him <laughs> in the hospital. This is crazy. He's not a well man. And, you know, he's, that panda might be trying to help him out, out a bit. But John puts on a brave face and you can see he's hooked up to all sorts of things there. And if some of you are thinking it's a scam, it is not. I've put in a donation. John has, I don't expect anyone to do the same size donation as I do. John has helped me out many, many, many times. He's done drawings for me for free and I sell them on the internet. And it's the absolute least I can do to give him a, a good solid donation in this. And you can do it anonymously anonymously if you wish but uh hold on a second what's going on here i need to no I'm not, i can't touch that camera because i'll end up mucking it up so it's uh that's that's what we're doing if you ha can find it in your heart to go down you know a couple of bucks that'd be fantastic just go down go to the gofundme we want to get it up to five thousand dollars if it goes past five thousand dollars well you know what he might be able to go and buy some health food at the same at the same time for the next two months. I'm not suggesting he goes to McDonald's and drinks Coca-Cola. That's just, no. Nah. But I shouldn't even mention a brand name. But anyway, there you go. Now back to, back to the task in hand. I'm hoping you can help out. Um, sorry, Dave, came in a bit late. Is the Jackery connected to the solar or is it independent? At the moment, it's independent. It's not connected to anything at the moment. And you can see it's down to 94%. The battery's down to 93% and it's going great. John, my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. Now, back to the important stuff. <laughs> he's, he's going okay, but, you know, I'm hoping that he makes it to the beginning of December. 18%. He went down from 80%, 180, 70, 60. Every time he goes and sees a specialist, they check him, check, do a heart monitor on him. It's down to 18%. I, John, John, um, John Wilson was telling me it was down to 16% the other day. This is terrible. Anyway, back to the job, back to the job. The next thing I'm going to do, I might even go up to Carl Camp for this part. Where are we? All right, so I'm, I haven't zoomed in, but that's just unlucky. So this is what I'm doing. I need to come in a certain distance now to kind of get a similar radius here. Um, so I'm thinking I might do the first one, eyeballing it. And that's where my hand is going to be, I think, as well. I'd have to make sure I've got enough room for my knuckles to get under there. Yep, that's all good. All the little things you've got to consider while you're doing this kind of stuff. So I want a similar radius back here. So I could do something with a, like, try and create a, a thing there. But I think I'll just go like this. There you go. I think that's going to look quite nice. I'll get rid of that one because that looks horrible. Now I'm going to measure the distance in. I'll just use the this guy here. It's not, it's not super accurate, but it's pretty good. Come back the other way. We'll come to there. And we'll do the same thing. Uh, what, that was to the bottom. I need that to come right across, David. Like so. And then just connect those two up like that. And then we're going to take it over to the bandsaw. Now, for anyone wondering, I'm not going to have a patron meeting today because I have to be a very good husband 
and go down and help Vicky. What I might do also is just a little radius there, but I've, I might just do that on the sander. David, I finally pulled the trigger on the capex and the cut quality is amazing. Rip cut a bit of Oregon and the finish of the saw was equal to the sharp plane. Amazing. It is. It is. Dave M. Yeah, prayers for John, but at the same time, money helps. Prayers are great, <laughs> but he's got to eat and he's got to be able to uh, find somewhere to sleep because that's important. That is very important. All right. So you can see we're at 93% now and 93% up on the battery. All right, I'm going to take this over here and so we'll move this out of the way. And I'll put this dust hose that was on the uh, saw stop around the back of the pan saw. And I'm going to do something else a little bit later on that'll blow your mind. Uh, where are we? That one, and I might even bring that video camera back over there. Coming around. Hmm. About there. Or should I put it on the other side? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to lift it up. I'm fussing around in the background, but it's okay. And come over here to this one. I just want to have a look on the other camera while I'm setting it up. Spin that around a little. There we go. Beautiful. I'm going to switch the camera over to the bandsaw. And the eye muffs back on again. Now, I have, you might say, well, Dave, how's this all working? I'll show you down here quickly. I've got a power board down there that's plugged in to the CT26. And that's how it's all working. That's why I'm not having to do too much mucking around in changing things. Uh, there we go. All right. Cutting. Let's see. Watch the power. All right. Now I think I might do a couple of relief cuts to start. Let's go for it. That's why you like the relief cuts. <laughs> I'm going to tidy this up with a spindle sander, so it doesn't matter if I'm hacking it a little bit. The radius might be a little bit tight for right around the back and get rid of those guys. And then here. Don't be tempted to push things off in front of the blade. You'll lose a finger straight away.
That was close. Ha! And we come across there. So you can see the shape is coming along nicely. I've got a nice grip here and I'm above there so I can get my knuckles in. That's the big thing. All right, do this one. How's that battery going? This is a real test for it because even though the bandsaw is not a big drag, it's got the uh, dust extractor running full time. You'll have to excuse my bandsaw work, it's not great. Oh, I went on the inside of the line, you idiot. There we go. Turn that one off. Now I'm going to come over to the bobbin sander. Let's see if you can see that all right. There we go. We'll switch him on. Again, down through the dust extractor. Watch the power pull up. 90%. The battery up the top is also 90%. Now this is spinning this direction, so I want to make sure I don't... Uh, I've, I've got to be aware of the direction it's spinning. Otherwise, it'll grab it. This one in particular, because if it grabs it, it's going to throw it like that and it might drag my finger in there. So I've got to be real careful. I'm holding it really tight out the back here. So I'm pivoting. Now that doesn't look too bad. Makes my bandsaw work look pretty good. Look at this crappy pit here. You watch now when I do this. Remember, it's going to pull from this side. What do you think? Now this end's going to be a little harder. Remember, I've got to do the same thing. I've got to make sure that I'm holding this end here and it can't push and drag me in. See that? It's getting a bit grabby. That's going to do me there. Back to this one. So there we have the handle for my float. Two more things to do. Put some nice rounds on it, but not on this section or there. We're going to put some roundovers on it. Put some roundovers on the top of this. And then we will glue and screw it on. How cool is that? Whoop. It'll stay on there better than that. All right, next thing, I will move that camera down to the router table. This is going to be the challenge. This is, a, this is nearly a three horsepower machine that I'm going to fire up on this, which may even pull a little bit more current 
than the capex. Now, one thing to be aware of: this is not having the capex for the oh, sorry the um, C CT26 for the dust extraction. This is going to have my big impeller over the back there do all the work, and that's because at the moment that's with a big induction motor, they have a hell of a draw. They pull so much amps at the beginning, this won't be able to handle it. I've tested it, it can't do it. But I'm looking at maybe possibly some kind of a variable frequency drive to put on that to reduce, to share the load out. It might work. We'll see what happens. I've, I've got a couple of people to chat to about that. One person in particular, and he knows who he is. Um, okay. I'm, I like this is a lovely little project. This is a DIY. Anyone can do this. You don't have to have these machines. I could have done this with a jigsaw or a coping saw, you know, cut or fret saw, whatever you want to call it. And then I could have sanded it with the sanding block or used a spoke shave to do all the tidying up. And then the round over, same kind of thing, a spoke shave to clean it all up. And then some coarse sandpaper down to fine sandpaper. It's just that I like to have toys. That's obvious. And uh, do it with all of this stuff. Let me see. It's got 60 people watching. That's great. Solar panels are 20% efficient in converting light to electrons. Uh, are 90%, and the DC to AC inverters are 90% efficient. Okay. Uh, of the charge will be high as they are MPPT solar controllers. There you go. Um, I've got that camera set up. Let me have a look and see what it actually looks like from here. It's not too bad. I'll just move it a little bit more. There, yeah, there we go. All right, I'll switch, the, switch them over. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this, this kind of stuff. I had someone give me a hard time during the week on one of the videos that I did. It was about the Black Friday sale. And saying, oh, it's a shame Dave's doing such, you know, in, just in it for the money now. Well, I'm not in it for the money. If I was in it for the money, man, oh, man, there would be a toll at the beginning of each thing you would have to pay to watch me. That's all there is to it. This, I've been doing this for eight years, I think, this show. I've only missed about a handful of them. Uh, so, you know, if you enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. Click the thumbs up. It's not, it's no skin off your nose. It, uh, my, my aim is to try and hit 100,000 subs. I'm at around 97,000 something. It's vanity. I just want to do it, please. <laughs> Give an old guy a break. Um, okay, so I'll switch to the other camera down there. Where are we? Transition. And also this allows me to help people out like John. I'm a vehicle for people to be able to um, share information. Here we go. Now, one of the important things I have down here is I have this little guy. Now, this guy here stops the router getting a hold of this piece of wood when I start. So I will be starting here and see I've got it, I've got it pushing against that and I'm going to use that as my pivot point and I'll bring it in and then I can start doing the round over. It's important not to red stuff coming out of these. You know what I mean. Anyway, here's my yellow thing. I will put the muffs on again. What have we got? We've got 15 minutes. We should be able to get it finished. Here we go. Let's see if it's going to work. Done. It's a bit rough, but that's just the way that it goes. Skipped off it a little bit there. That's nice. We need to do the ends. Oh, 
little bit of a tear there. You didn't see that. And then down the inside. There we go. All rounded over. Just needs a little bit of a sand now. We'll do that over here. Have you got the first level YouTube wall hanger? No, 100,000 is your first level, I think, John. Or were you talking to someone else? I think this type of show is great. Keep it up, please. Okay. I will. You know, it's just, it just gets a little annoying when someone, I don't know if they meant it in a nasty way or whether they just weren't thinking. Maybe they'd had a couple too many vodkas one night. I, I don't know. But, you know, I read all the comments and I'm only human, and I do take it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't let that affect me, but it does. All right, sandpaper I have right here. And then I did say I was gonna show you something pretty amazing. Um, I've gotta come back down to this part. Uh, I, I did a list, and I probably haven't done any of it. <laughs> I'm gonna read through it. Monitor of power on on the jackery, yes. Uh, change lens, I'm up, we're done, cut the length, John. Uh, rip the handle, draw a shape on the handle, cut with a bandsaw, sand with a spindle sand, a router table, drill holes. Well, I need to sand this first before I drill the holes. So let's have it. If you use a nice coarse paper, it does not take long. I need to do it all because if I glue it on, it's a pain in the neck to get to it. I'm using the grip tape on my bench to my advantage at the moment. It's not sliding around. Do you notice that? So, so far, we've got it looking not too bad. Forget this bit underneath here. I'm going to do that next. A little bit there. we go, this part here. Uh, I don't mind sanding. I know a lot of people think it's a horrible job to have to do. I like to see how it comes up after I've sanded. I guess I could have done this somehow on the spindle sander, but it's going okay. Just one little bit left. Ten to nearly time. How are we going with that fund? Have we hit 5,000 yet? I'm keen for it during the show. That would make my day and I would get over my sookiness at the moment. <laughs> if it can help John out, that'd be great. As I say, you know, we, we just get around and we take for granted good health. I'm not saying that there's people out there that um, 
aren't, aren't well, you know, and I feel for you as well. It's just that this John is, uh, because I know him, this, this all happens to other people, to, to people you don't know. But because you know someone, it's a whole different story. That's going to do me for that. All right. Um, a little bit there. 80 grit's not going to worry me because this is concrete. It's going to be used on concrete. It's not going to have any bearing on what's that, the other stuff whatsoever. No, I'm just going to... What am I talking about? I'm waffling. I'm waffling. So I need to measure the width. That is 124. That's 62 millimeters that I want. Which is that. And let's see if I've got a sharper pencil there. I do. Out of Cole's pencil box there that he gave to me. All right. So 62. And on the other way. You can't even see it because I've got the rotten old jackery in the way. <laughs> 62. And then we'll pop it just on there somewhere. We'll measure the distance. I should have my tape here, but I can't find it right at the moment. Uh, 74. 64 come into 70. 65 go back two and a half. That's it. That's where it's got to go to. And there. So basically what I've done now is I've put a line at both ends where the end of the thing is going. So now I can sit it on top there. That looks great. That's, oh, I forgot to put the round over on that. Well, we'll do that in a second because I want to do that before I um, glue it together. So let's put a screw hole there and another screw hole there. Extremely accurate. And a drill. I use the one with the self centering. Not self centering, it's uh, tapered with a countersink. One hole, countersunk, one here. Yeah, I'm sorry about the patron meeting. Vicky, ow, that got me. Vicky is doing a few markets this weekend. So we did two markets yesterday. We started <laughs> at the markets at 6, up at 4.30. We finished the markets at 9 p.m. last night. That's a big day. So then we got home, had to do all the cleaning and everything for the, the samples and all that kind of stuff. So Vicky didn't get to sleep till about midnight. And she was up again because there's another market today she's doing. And I had to set up another market for one of our grandson's daughter, oh, grandson's uh, fiance as well. No, not fiance, grandson, Aaron, have you asked the question? Grandson's girlfriend, uh, who has got an RSA, responsible serving of alcohol, and she is doing one for us while I'm here. So we're paying her while I'm doing this for free. <laughs> so there is, there is stuff happening in the background that, uh, you guys may not be aware of. Now I'm going to use the same drill just to mark it. And again. And I'm using uh, Robinson Drive number two stainless steel screws. The holes are out of the way. I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of that guy. When I find the glue, I didn't. It was, it's not drawing a lot of blood, that nick that I got from the drill, but it's a little bit there. This is uh, type bond number three. So this is a waterproof glue. Put it on this. Don't put it on the float because you'll never find it. It might be all over the place. As in where to put it. Spread it out a little bit. As I said, the screw is only really to hold it while the glue goes off. The glue is going to do it all. 
All right, 4,078. Thank you so much, guys. It is really, really appreciated. Robertson Drive. Let's see if we can hit 5,000. It's like a telethon, isn't it? <laughs> Do they have telethons anymore? I don't know. You can't see what anything I'm doing there. Let's move this back. And I've still got something to show you. So don't go. Don't go. You'll be fascinated with this. Undo that. Come back to there. Back it up a little. That's got him. Beautiful. And the other end. Back it up. Gotcha. Look, screws didn't come through. And I've got a beautiful handle. That is a bloody nice float. What do you reckon? The round over, of course. You know what? I'm going to use a hand plane. Give me a second. Uh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Which one am I going to use? I'll use... I'll use the little number four, my turner number four. Why not? Here we go. This guy here, these are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Does anyone else get their rocks off with <laughs> this kind of stuff? I love it. I'm, I, there's something wrong with me. Why would anyone have a passion for woodworking and, and all the toys like I do? Okay, here we go. You can't see that. Bad luck. I'm going to do the end grain first. Both ends. I'll come back up here. And then along. That way we don't tear out. Actually, I might use the block plan, it might work better. This is a little Falcon 220. This is a lovely little plan. Yeah, that's better. Wrong direction. That'll do me. So now I have, it's all nice and friendly. It's got a little chamfer around the top. The handle is really comfortable to touch. And I have, I may even put a tiny arras across the bottom, just so as you're floating, it's going to make it nicer. But what do you reckon? Now here's the thing I want to show you guys. I don't even need to, to change the cameras. I'm gonna try turning them all on. Here we go, this one. What? This one? And the banjo. Easy. There we go. I'm going to have a quick read down through here. Um, drill holes, glue and screw. John again, no Patreon meeting. Yeah, let's have another quick look at John so that you can feel the uh, heartstrings going out. Here we go, there he is. He needs a place to sleep. He doesn't want to live under a bridge while he's got, after he's had his heart surgery. You, you guys need to help him out. Anyway, Thank you very much for watching. I'm not having the Patreon meeting today. I've got to get down and pack up for this girl so I can go down into the Hawkesbury and then I can help Vicky for the rest of the day finish off the market. Pack it up, come home. Tomorrow, Vicky and I are just going to fall in a heap. We are absolutely cooked. All right, again, thank you everyone. I'll do a quick read down through here. Bloody kids don't listen. Uh, round over the base. Um, what's in the coffee cup? 
Well, surprise, surprise, it's coffee and hot chocolate. Does that grab you? <laughs> um, you know, daiquiri with a jackery? I have no idea. Um, yeah, get me up to 100,000 and that'd be great. G'day, John from Texas, uh, 3978. That's great, John. I'm so happy for you. Um, Wayne Jones, buy all, stay safe. Thanks again for watching. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I'll see you all next week. Got no idea what we're going to do, but it's going to be fun. See you later.